It started uh, for me with a panic attack on national television on a little show that we do at ABC News called Good Morning America. I was overtaken with this ir irresistible bolt of fear. My name is Dan Harris. I'm uh, uh, an anchorman at ABC News. I also wrote a book called 10% Happier, which is about how a fidgety, skeptical journalist discovered meditation. Uh, basically what happened was I was anchoring the news updates. That's the person who comes on at the top of each hour and reads a few headlines off of the teleprompter. Uh, it was a job I had done many times before, so I had no reason to foresee what was about to happen. Health news now, one of the world's most commonly prescribed medications may be providing a big bonus. Researchers report people who take cholesterol-lowering drugs called statins for at least five years may also lower their risk for cancer, but it's too early to, to prescribe statins slowly for cancer production. Uh, that does it for news. We're going to go back now to Robin and Charlie. It was really embarrassing and also really confusing. I ended up going to a shrink who asked me a series of questions to try to get at the root of the problem. And one of the questions was, uh, do you do drugs? And I kind of sheepishly said, yeah, I do. I had come home from a long run in Iraq and I had gotten depressed. And I did a really dumb thing as I started to self-medicate with recreational drugs, including cocaine and ecstasy. It was intermittent, um, but it was enough, according to my shrink, to prime me to have this panic attack on national television. So that, that panic attack, which was the most embarrassing moment of my life, in a weird way, led me to the thing that made me 10% happier. My boss at the time was a guy named Peter Jennings, a legendary anchorman, gave me an assignment that I didn't want. He assigned me to cover faith and spirituality for ABC News. Many years into covering the beat, it was suggested to me by one of my colleagues that I read a self-help book by a guy named Eckhart Tolle. At first I thought it was unremitting, irretrievable bullshit. But notwithstanding my initial skepticism, I, I continued to read and I was glad I did because Tolley started to unfurl this, this thesis about the human situation that I had never heard before. His argument is that we all have a voice in our heads. If you're unaware of this nonstop conversation you are having with yourself, it yanks you around. It's why you find yourself with your hand in the fridge when you're not hungry, or you're checking your email in the middle of a conversation with your kid, or you're losing your temper when it's strategically unwise. The idea of the voice in the head explained the most embarrassing moment of my life. I started to get interested in meditation, and I, I really thought that as somebody who was a non-obvious meditator, but who was deriving a lot of value from it, that there were, I, I just suspected there were tens of millions of smart, skeptical people who would otherwise reflectively reject the practice, who might be open to it if it was presented in a different way. Notwithstanding all of the cultural residue that has accrued to meditation as a practice, in fact, the scientific research suggests it works. Happiness is a skill that can be trained just the way you train your bicep in the gym. And that's a really radical and empowering notion.